Hey everyone, Derpy here, back with another Battle Pirates video, and this is my How to Kill Skirmish Target Strategy Guide for the 2020 cycle. The next raid, the first raid, will be January of next year. So, the basic idea behind this is that Kickside releases a strategy guide for the upcoming raid, but they usually release it the same day that the first raid in the actual cycle starts. Now, this is completely backwards to me. I think we should have the information before the raid happens so we have time to plan and get our builds done and work on that. So most people might just complain or not do anything about it, but I've decided to make my own strategy guide. Following the principle that if you're knowing what your ships are bringing and you're knowing what the enemy happened, what's an enemy target, then you're going to win. Now all this information is based off the 105 Reaver Junk Bay VXP target and a lot of testing I've done in there, which did take a lot of work. So if you appreciate this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that, that like button. So let's get into it. Skirmish targets, what ships are you going to want to use? You're going to want to use skirmish ships, and it does get more advanced after this. These are things like the Riot, the Silverfish, the Bat Ray, and the Razor Tail, and their flagship variants. We're going to have top targets, which will be the Riot and then meet some lower tier targets, which will actually be the Pegasus, and the next skirmish target where you're going to see, will, you'll want to use this, your Silverfish. I don't think Bat Rays or Razor Tails will do very well at all in this raid. I do have some general build advice that you want to focus on with skirmish ships. Skirmish ships generally have concussive damage, torpedoes, or depth charges. I think that torpedoes are going to be the way to go in these targets. And you'll notice the Riot has torpedoes and the Silverfish has depth charges. The problem with those gets into splash versus accuracy based weapons. And in this case, if your enemy's moving quickly, accuracy based weapons such as torpedoes are going to, better, going to do better than splash based weapons such as depth charges. You're also going to want to focus on having concussive and explosive survival. This is generally built in on the higher holes, but you're also going to want to use CTX armor, armor and possibly some specials on some of the lower ships. You are going to want to use armor on the higher ships. Countermeasures will also be important, and these are things like anti-mortars and anti-torpedoes. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that when I go over the specific enemy ships. Something not mentioned on screen here is evade. Evade can be important if you're going against accuracy-based weapons. So now that we know what we're bringing in, let's figure out what the enemy's bringing. I'm going to go over all the enemy ships so you know what you have to bring to defeat them. The first enemy ships are these Reaver Scouts. They're fairly slow, which you can outrun them even with just a basic Riot build and then one engine. Hyper 30 isn't needed, although it will help, which I'll get into a little bit. These Scouts are slow, and they have depth charges. Jet, these depth charges are concussive and they're splash, so evade will not help against this. However, moving quickly and moving away from where they shoot at a high speed will help. So hyper 30 will help here by moving away from these, in addition to whatever splash damage reduction specials you have on your ships. These have a range of approximately 88, so you can't outrange them with your riot, However, the Silverfish actually have a range of 93 and can outrange these, which I think is interesting. So there might be some kind of mechanic you can use there, but you're not going to be able to outrange these. You are going to try to want to stay at a maximum distance, maximum range, but it won't be super helpful unless you're moving quickly. These do have thermal, which means that they're going to kill your subs easily. I don't think submarines will be very useful in these targets. The last sub we saw was the Fang Tooth. I was somewhat hoping for Riot to be a sub, but that didn't happen. Scouts will also go off the edge, edge of the map sometimes, which is a mechanic I wish was not present. And you have to move your ships around, try to get them back in sometimes, or just kill them before they go off the edge of the map. I think it's unfair and it's cheating. I wish they would fix that issue. So that's the first enemy hole. I think it's a fairly low threat. The second one here is Hell Rifts. These are more of a medium threat. They're also slow. And these are an enemy submarine that stays surfaced all the time unless it's activated by a cab field. Now, Hellwraiths have two types of torpedoes. There's a small gray torpedo, which is concussive and is accuracy-based, so Evade will help against that. There's also a big red torpedo similar to the Fire Twisters that we saw in our own Hellwraiths years ago. And this is explosive and has splash. Evade will not help, but moving quickly away, this is what we know as a dumb fire torp. Moving quickly away from a dumb fire torp will help. 
You can also surface them by using the cab fields from the torpedo towers, which I'll talk about in a second. Next ship here is the Enforcer. The Enforcer is very slow. It has rockets, which are short range, and you should be able to outrange and never get hit by these. If you do end up going in the range, it's about 75 or 70. You can keep moving quickly in a straight line and you'll take lower damage this way. Think of it similar to a Cerberus rocket. It also has mortars, which are the ones that we saw on the Gluttony in the last cycle. They're mortar missile combos, but you can shoot them down with Gale, so I believe they're technically mortars. And they come at you in a straight line, and you can avoid them by going away and, and by move, either shooting them down, which probably won't cover all of them, or moving away in a moving away perpendicular to the path, so you can dodge the mortar damage from there. It also has torpedoes, ice torpedoes, that will move towards you and they, they, they're semi-tracking. They're not necessarily smart torpedoes, but they will, some, they will track you a little bit. They're not that good at it, and they'll, they're completely avoidable, and they do leave an ice field when they explode. However, you cannot avoid this ice field with things like Agility System 4. You need slow and, you, slow and stun resistance is not good enough. You need tactical field resistance. It also has a death bomb, where once it dies, a bunch of orange things spat out from the middle of the ship, and it leaves auras on the map, and you, it's somewhat difficult to tell where these things are actually going, so you might get hit by one of these every once in a while. I don't necessarily like that random feature, because you can't really know where the death bombs are going, so it's hard to avoid the damage. All of this damage is 100% explosive, and it's all splash-based, so that means things like Speed are very good against these. You should be able to mitigate all the damage, take zero damage from the Enforcer by moving around and moving quickly and dancing around this in a circle without going too closely to it. The next couple things are kind of in interesting. This is next thing is a minefield. The minefield is static, which means it doesn't use. It's what you're seeing on screen here that I have my mouse over. It's not my silverfish or my silverfish aura. It's neutral, which means you can use this to your advantage. Because when you drive over it, like my silverfish is doing in this picture, it leaves an explosive aura that deals high damage. You can pull the enemy ships across this and kill them, kill do a lot of damage to them by and by just luring them over this. So you should try and do that in the raid if these are present. It also has a fairly large hitbox. They're triggered much more easily than you would think. You can also surface them if they're in a cavern, which is the next thing I'll talk about, but I don't think that has any effect on the damage that these things deal out. So you should try to avoid them or you'll take explosive damage, or also you can use them to pull the enemies over to kill them more quickly. The next object here is a torpedo tower. I believe the torpedo towers are weaponless as well as static, meaning they don't move. And it does leave a cav ring when killed. You can see in the middle is the torpedo tower, and the bottom right is the cav ring left. It has a high ra radius, high diameter, and it lasts for about 10 seconds. And you can use this to your advantage by pulling the enemy hell wraiths over the cav ring to surface them, because I believe the hell wraiths might take more damage when they are surfaced, although that's not official, that's not confirmed. So if you're having trouble with any of this stuff, you can. No, there are a couple things that you can know. You can keep practicing. It doesn't start out easy. You can check your builds. They should be similar, not perfect, to what other people are using in the raids. Upgrading ships, if possible, does help. And watching videos, checking Facebook forums, reading tips, YouTube, all those are good things. If you can also leave a comment on one of my videos here, this one or one that I'll upload a month from now when the raid happens, I'll try and help you out. YouTube generally gets the fastest response on this. So... Kicksaw has not released a strategy guide. They will in a month. I'm hoping that mine released now will be more helpful. So if you are enjoying this, there are a couple things that you can do. If this did help you, there are a couple things you can do. You can comment below if you have any questions that let, let me help answer any questions that you have. You can also like the video. That lets me know that videos like this are good. And if videos like this are good, I'll make one next cycle so you'll know what's happening next cycle too. You can also subscribe to my channel so you're not dependent on seeing them only on Facebook. You'll also see them on YouTube. Check your subscription on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Derpy the Cow, and I'll come up. The last thing you can do is click the notification bell. That lets you see my videos when they're first released, and a lot of this information is time sensitive. 
If this was helpful, you can also share it to your alliance. I don't have that listed here so that they can see these tips too and they'll know what to expect in the next raid because I believe probably with 90% certainty that what's information in here, we're going to see, I know we're going to see targets very similar to this in, this in the next raid. I think that they will be almost identical to these holes in the next raid. I wish because I would, would release their strategy guide earlier. They haven't, so I've made one myself. Anyway, this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.